Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Just love those chimes. Well, I'm checking batteries today, and uh, the batteries that I bought were four of 14, and they went into service about May that year. And it's August, no, July. It's July, not August yet. So that's about three and a half years. Looks like the wind is messing with the sunscreen for the chickens. Ah. So about three and a half years off grid on these batteries. And I am watering them right now. And I came up here and looked and I watered last in April. You guys should keep a list on your batteries so you know what you're doing and changes that you make. So um, April 7th was the last time I did it. So about three months. And I go through about a gallon and a half of distilled water. And this is the longest stretch that I've gone. So they're taking a little bit more water, but I wanted to show you the date there is 4 of 14, and this is um, 2017. I wanted to show you a battery that I hadn't put any distilled water in yet to kind of give you an idea what the plates look like. And every one of them looks exactly like that. Just clean, like the day I bought them. And I noticed today, the reason why I'm making this video, is that three and a half years off grid to have, come on and focus. Three and a half years to be off grid and have plates look that clean, I think that's remarkable. And a lot of it is because I don't cycle the batteries. Um, typically use the top 11%, but we've been actually taking them down to 84. So 16% of the battery, and we don't go lower than that, never have. And that's why the plates look new, because they just the batteries haven't done very much work at all. So three and a half years, and the, the plates look new. So. I did the specific gravity test today, and this bank is seven months, nine months, something like that. This bank is older, excuse me, this bank is newer, seven months to nine months newer than that bank. So the specific gravity typically is uh, lower on the newer battery, and I don't know why. So. What I'm saying is they're different. The back bank, the original bank, today was reading 1.30, and I'm shooting for 1.285 uh, on the specific gravity when they're fully charged. And so I got 1.30 on a couple of those, and this bank was typical at 1.29. So I'm going to knock a half hour off my absorb time on this charge controller and see if I can bring this bank down to 1.28 and that bank down to 1.29 and just live with it. Because of my elevated float voltage, which is set at 28 about 28 volts, I think, for a 24 volt system. And it's holding float right now at 27.9, 27.9, and real 27.9, 28 volts. I think it's trying to hold it at uh, about 28. I forget what I set it at. That's elevated, but that's also helping keep the plates clean. And the only thing that it costs me is watering my batteries here, as we can see, every three months rather than every six months. And if I can make my batteries last 
many, many years longer by doing it the way we're doing it. It's worth it. Get up here every three months and put a gallon and a half of water in. Uh, every couple of weeks, I take a test at least once a month. I take a test on the specific gravity, a spot test, to make sure that my parameters are right. Now, the thing that folks don't typically understand about batteries is um, your parameters for your charge controllers are in a state of flux. But the, in other words, things are changing. As your batteries get older, their efficiency goes down. So our target efficiency for a brand new battery is 90%. When battery is about six years old, that might be 80%, depending on uh, the depth of discharge and you know how you run your batteries. So over time, you're gonna to have to make some adjustments on your charge controller uh, considering the age of the batteries. Typically, it's messing with the absorb time, the absorb time a little bit longer, or maybe uh, having your uh, return amp setting, or your, your uh, yeah, or your return amps, I think that's what they call it. So you've got two factors with these kinds of charge controllers. How many amps is your battery bank taking at a s absorb voltage? when it's fully charged. And so ending amps or return amps, I think I have mine set for an 840 amp hour battery bank. I think I have eight amps set for the ending amps and two and a half hours on the absorb at 30 volts, which is higher than most of the rest of the world, but I got some inside information from some people that have been doing this for a while. And so by doing those things, uh, it's been working. And so when the charge controller sees um, either eight amps, ending amps, when it's clear full, when it sees eight amps going into the batteries, or two and a half hours, whichever comes first, it rolls over into float. And I'm close, but it looks like I'm a little bit hot. Not physically hot, the batteries are at 84 degrees right now, but what I'm saying is specific gravity is just slightly too high. So I'm gonna bring it down a notch, trim a half hour off the absorb time, and I absolutely love seeing really clean plates. There you go. All right, just a brief battery report, and I hope you're all having a blessed day.